It is the dark night of the new moon. At seven o'clock, the devotees make arrangements for the worship of Kali in Sri Ramakrishna's room on the second floor. Flowers, sandal paste, bilva leaves, red hibiscus, rice pudding, and various sweets and other articles of worship are placed in front of the master. The devotees are singing around him. There are present, among others, Sharut, Shoshi, Ram, Girish, Chunilal, M, Rakhal, Niranjun, and the younger Narin. Sri Ramakrishna asks a devotee to bring some incense. A few minutes later, he offers all the articles to the Divine Mother. M is seated close to him. Looking at M, he says to the devotees, Meditate a little. The devotees close their eyes. Presently, Girish offers a garland of flowers at Sri Ramakrishna's feet. M offers flowers and sandal paste. Rakhan, Ram and the other devotees follow him. Niranjan offers a flower at Sri Ramakrishna's feet, crying, Brahmamoi, Brahmamoi and prostrates himself before him, touching the master's feet with his head. The devotees cry out, Joy Ma, hail to the mother. In the twinkling of an eye, Sri Ramakrishna goes into deep samadhi. An amazing transformation takes place in the master before the very eyes of the devotees. His face shines with a heavenly light. His two hands are raised in the posture of granting boons and giving assurance to the devotees. It is the posture one sees in images of the Divine Mother. His body is motionless. He has no consciousness of the outer world. He sits facing the north. Is the Divine Mother of the Universe manifesting herself through this person? Speechless with wonder, the devotees look intently at Sri Ramakrishna, who appears to them to be the embodiment of the Divine Mother herself. The devotees begin to sing hymns, one of them leading and the rest following in chorus. Girish sings, Who is this woman with the thick black hair shining amidst the assembly of the gods? Who is she, whose feet are like crimson lotuses planted on Shiva's chest? Who is she, whose toenails shine like the full moon, whose legs burn with the brightness of the sun? Who is she, who now speaks soft and smiles on us, and now fills all the quarters of the sky with shouts of terrible laughter. Again, O oh Mother, Saviour of the helpless, Thou the slayer of sin, In Thee do the three gunas dwell, 
sattva, rajas, and tamas. Thou dost create the world, thou dost sustain it and destroy it. Binding thyself with attributes, thou yet transcendest them. For thou, O mother, art the all. Bihari sings, O Shyama, thou who dost sit upon a corpse, I beg thee, hear my heart's most fervent prayer, as my last breath forsakes this mortal flesh. Reveal thyself within my heart. Then in my mind from forest and from grove, I shall gather the red hibiscus flowers and scenting them with the sandal paste of love shall lay them at thy lotus feet. M. Sings with the other devotees. O mother, all is done after thine own sweet will. Thou art in truth self-willed, Redeemer of mankind. Thou workest thine own work, men only call it theirs. They sing again. All things are possible, O Mother, through thy grace. Obstacles mountain high thou makest to melt away. Thou home of bliss, to all thou givest peace and joy. Why then should I be made to suffer fruitlessly, brooding on the success or failure of my deeds? And again, O Mother, ever blissful as thou art, do not deprive thy worthless child of bliss. My mind knows nothing but thy lotus feet. The king of death scowls at me terribly. Tell me, mother, what shall I say to him? They conclude. In dense darkness, O mother, thy formless beauty sparkles. Therefore, the yogis meditate in a dark mountain cave.